Hey everyone, my name is Venelin, and in this wonderful Slavic night, I'm going to speculate about the QSTAR algorithm by OpenAI. This is no doubt an open AGI achievement, or not so open, and according to Reuters, they are developing this breakthrough that is the breakthrough that they actually needed in order to achieve AGI. In this video, I'm going to try to get away from the hype and try to get a bit of deeper dive on what the QSTAR might be. And I'm not even sure if QSTAR exists or if they are actually developing something like that. But again, I'm going to speculate a lot in this video. So this is a write-up by Nathan Lambert, and I'm going to link uh, to leave a link down into the description to this blog post. So he is actually developing this Q star hypothesis, so what this might be. And as you can see from the title, uh, this uh, appears to be, at least according to his hypothesis, a tree of thought reasoning mix with some process reward models. And I'm going to explain uh, what those are in this video. So here is essentially the most important part of the breakthrough or the Reuters news. QSTAR pronounced uh, QSTAR could be a breakthrough in the startup search for what's known as artificial general intelligence. And the sources from OpenAI, which are anonymous, say that it can solve certain mathematical problems and it is performing math on the level of grade school students, but it appears to be uh, a way or a novel way to improve the model by itself, which is a very interesting, of course. So the key hypothesis about this QSTAR method is that actually what this is, is a combination of much more advanced technique for prompting large language models, such as the tree of told method. And if you haven't heard about this paper, I'm going to go a bit more about this in a bit. And then after the prompts are designed to create to create these uh, trees of thoughts, then you are essentially scoring each node of this decision tree that is provided by the large language model. And then in such way, you can essentially create a self-perpetual or recursive way to improve the reasoning of the large language models or your models, essentially. So. This is very reminiscent of what AlphaZero did. Uh, if you recall, uh, this is the model provided by DeepMind that actually beat the world greatest Go player. And the essence of this model was that it was playing with itself. So there weren't so many data points available for to learn to the game of Go. So essentially what it did is to create its own synthetic data and then use that to surpass many times even the best Go player. So you can think of the Q star hypothesis or what the this method can do is to essentially do the same thing, but for essentially everything. So yeah, this is pretty cool hypothesis, I would say. I'm not sure if this is real or how the actual methods or the results of those models are. But let's have a look. So the tree of thoughts prompting uh, was, uh, again, a paper that was describing that essentially what you can do is to force the large language model to give you the steps in, uh, of reasoning. And then you can essentially branch out on different steps. So you can essentially try to force multiple um, approaches in order to solve a similar problem. So these are called reasoning paths. And uh, when you explore a reasoning path, you might go to a successful solution to the current problem, or you might uh, essentially hit into a roadblock and then you have to essentially backtrack from there. So if you are uh, familiar with what trees are, uh, you can see that uh, this is actually creating this reasoning structure which you can use in order to, again, go through a solution and then you can uh, backtrack to a previous level or a previous step of the tree and then try something else. So essentially, you are creating these trees which are representing the complete or somewhat complete ways 
to, to solve a given problem. And this is uh, really interesting. And one of the more important ideas right here is that you are essentially creating these steps, which are not just a single reply to the of the large language model, but essentially your large language model is giving you a step by step instructions. And what you can do here is to actually score each step. So you can say, uh, for example, if you're asking your large language model to create you a plan for how to change your uh, tire for your car, and then you, you can, might be given, uh, let's say, 10 different points. And then on this plan, you can actually go ahead and score each point and whether or not it is good and whether or not it is, uh, for example, even useful or you can essentially remove or add something else. So this is really powerful stuff. And uh, this appears to be the first way that we can actually do recursive prompting improvement or inference improvement for this model. So this is very, very powerful. Um, this is, I believe, that the first, probably the first thing that I've heard about uh, recursively improving those types of models and their reasoning. And yeah, as the author here says that this is AI safety concern as concern of recursive self-improving models. So yeah, if we try to go away from the hype, uh, this appears to be one way to continuously improve the performance of our models. And then, yeah, I've already told you that uh, with these reasoning tree trees, we can actually score each step or each node of this tree, how well it does. And essentially, we can also score the complete path to the solution. So if this is the solution and you're uh, you're given here the problem that you're going to have, uh, and then you can essentially score each individual node, how good it is, and then you can actually score how well or how long the path was. So for example, uh, in this path, you might just solve the problem within three steps, while if you go through this path, you might go here, here, and then uh, create some four or six or even 10 uh, on other steps. And then your new path is going to be essentially much larger. So this would not be beneficial. And then you can essentially score this path as a whole as a better path compared to this one. And again, this is how those types of models can improve recursively. So this is really the interesting point. And then the what this breakthrough gives us according to the RLHF or uh, reinforcement warning from human feedback, uh, at least until now, or the first version of uh, ChatGPT was using this approach to score the essentially the whole response from the ChatGPT methods or models. And you were essentially given, uh, if you recall from the UI, thumbs up, thumbs down, or you can essentially go and write some feedback to the output. And from that, you are essentially scoring the complete text. But with the tree of told way, you can just score individual nodes. I've, we've already discussed this. And uh, this was one of the limitations of RAHF. So what we can do now is to essentially create these chunks of text or steps or nodes within those trees. And then we are going to uh, score each one individually. So this is again really powerful away from the hype. So uh, this is provided from the OpenAI paper. Let's verify step by step. And uh, you can see here that essentially for the mathematical problems that are given, you can go and score each one on its own. So essentially this will be a one node in your tree. And you can say that this is wrong or this is correct, this is correct, etc. etc. So much easier way to score each individual step of this tree that you're creating. So yeah, so for the RLHF, uh, many people were needed, but now since we have uh, such a larger or stronger model such as GPT-4, what we can do? Well, we can essentially replace the humans and use AI to score AI results. Uh, and you can see here that within the paper, this was uh, the initial UI that you were given. But of course, we have 
something like GPT-4, and uh, GPT-4 can actually score AI outputs. So again, we are going for complete automation of the improvement, something that is uh, very, again, very interesting compared to what we have thus far. So the crux of this idea, at least according to what I've read, is that you might actually not need more human created data, but now you can use synthetic data or data created by AI to improve the AI capabilities. So again, we are talking here about improvement provided by data that is generated by AI. So no human involvement. And then when the output is given, AI is again scoring the responses and then creating this self-perpetual or recursive loop in order to improve AI models. So this, at least to me, sounds very, very potent. And I would love to hear more about the approaches that the guys that are essentially doing this are using. So yeah, the last step is where the remote vast computing resources use AI to label every step with a score instead of human. So yeah, again, this is very, uh, I would say, compute intensive and only large companies such as OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, etc. can have this amount of compute in order to create those vast amounts of synthetic data and improve the AI even further compared to what human data can do. What happens when we humans are not needed for data to be created by us for the AI? No, everyone in top AI research labs is working on giving dialogue systems the ability to plan and reason. Of course, Meta, DeepMind, OpenAI are always trying to train these models. And Jan Likon says that QSTAR is just one project amongst many. And then he's talking about the planning expert in OpenAI, Noam Brown. And he worked on poker and diplomacy at Cicero at, uh, again, Meta. So, again, this is someone that is working on planning methods. And uh, even Yanli can suspect that this has something to do with QSTAR. So, this is supposedly a hidden message or email that was provided by OpenAI researchers. And I'm not even sure if this is real or not. So, uh, even though we are going to have a read through that and we are going to again speculate on what is happening here. So the message or the email says that Qualia has demonstrated an ability to statistically significantly improve the way in which selects optimal actions. So uh, here we're or they're talking about exhibiting metacognition in later demonstrated an unprecedented ability to uh, apply this for accelerated cross domain learning. So what they're talking about is that it can learn in different areas uh, without prior uh, training on that. Following an unsupervised learning session on an expanded ad hoc dataset consisting of articles in descriptive statistics and cryptanalysis. So essentially what they were doing is to create or give it some uh, dataset of articles on statistics and crypto analytics. It analyzed millions of plaintext and ciphertext pairs from various crypto systems. Via a ciphertext-only attack, it provided a playtext from a given ES192 ciphertext by using Tau analysis. And then uh, it says that they are not fully understanding what is happening or the way that it actually broke this cipher. So this uh, looks pretty sci-fi like i'm not sure how you can interpret that but then again they say that they're confirming the result and it looks that it was legitimate and uh, achieved within the framework that it was using so yeah uh, they're talking about that they not fully understand how this was done and they can't uh, explain the way that the model provided this attack. But 
Uh, here I'm going to go through the WAST paragraph. It suggested target unstructured underlying pruning of its model. So this is the part that is uh, really interesting uh, in, in a way that the model is actually trying to suggest improvements for itself after evaluating the significance of each parameter for inference accuracy. So what they're talking about is actually self analyzement or self analysis but in this case uh, the model is actually analyzing each parameter and the significance of it it also suggested adapting the resulting prune transformer model so here at least they're talking about a transformer model and its current context memory to a different format using a novel type of metamorphic engine so uh, here again, they're talking about complete transformation of the format in which the model was saved, probably. The feasibility of that suggestion has not yet been evaluated, but is currently not something we recommend implementing. So uh, yeah, it looks like according at least to this email or message that those types of models are eagerly wanting to self-improve and other than uh, their desires to do that they are actually providing ways to improve that and i wouldn't be so hard to believe that uh, for example the improvements provided within uh, for example gpt4 or maybe gpt5 which is now in training are partially inspired by what the for example chat gpt or gpt 3.5 is providing as suggestions for improvement of those models so i would say that probably some of the model architecture or the way that those models are already trained is inspired by ai but this is more of a symbiotic connection so you can imagine a researcher that is talking to ai in our case for example chat gpt or gpt4 and then the ai is actually suggesting improvements to the internal structure that is available to the model since the researcher is probably providing the context for that and uh, i wouldn't be surprised if already some of the improvements that OpenAI is doing and probably other uh, ai researchers are doing to all their models are actually suggested by ai so uh, yeah it will be probably very interesting when the humans are not needed in order to implement the improvements and the models do that on their own there were a lot of news about OpenAI in the last week or so but let's put the hype aside i think it is really important for OpenAI to bring back the open part of their company and show us what is happening behind closed doors so what do you think is this just a hype or is it the breakthrough that AGI needs? Let me know down in the comments below.